Alright guys, so here's the deal. I said I was going to look into playing some tournament poker, and so I think that's what we're going to do tonight. I'm going to load up some tables on Ignition. I'm going to look for some sit and goes, some 18-man uh, sit and goes, and some single table sit and goes, and jump into the action. Um, I told you guys I'm not really a tournament specialist, but let's take a shot. Let's see how it goes, so let's go ahead and get in the action. What's up guys? So I went ahead and got on Ignition and loaded up a couple of one table sit and go. It's just a standard nine man sit and go, standard speed, not a turbo, not a hyper turbo. And because I don't have much money left on Ignition, I took most of it off and I went to Vegas, didn't put it back on yet. Um, I'm just playing the micro stakes ones, which is typically what I play anyways. And I got on to a couple of $1 sit and go. So I mean, this is like the bottom of the barrel, the cheapest ones you can get onto. And, um, table on the left has been running I would say I don't know maybe like 15 minutes or so um, 14 minutes been running and this table has been running uh, and this tournament has been running for four minutes so because this is just a standard length sit and go I am not going to record the entire tournament so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to really um, see if I can advance further into the tournament into the later stages because the beginning stages of the tournament right now where the blinds are really low it's just super boring it's super straightforward um, we play fairly tight um, you know ICM says there's really not much of a benefit in trying to accumulate a little bit of chips at a time so I'm not really interested in that I did double up though um, with ace queen versus this fish here that I knocked out Got max value versus ace four off with top pair, and um, got him to um, you know stack off with um, with ace four off on the river. Um, you know, got all the chips in and uh, doubled up. But other than that, for the most part, if you don't have a really strong hand, you should play fairly conservative and uh, let everybody else knock themselves out because you benefit by not even playing. So with the concept of ICM, when a player leaves. I don't get of all of his equity. His tournament equity now goes to other players as well because now they have an increased chance of winning the tournament. So their equity share in the tournament increases. And so that's kind of the concept between ICM and playing conservative early on and also building equity in the tournament um, by not even playing a hand, by letting your other opponents just knock themselves out. And so that's what we do in the early stages. And then as we progress later into the later stages, to the middle stages of the tournament, um, we start looking to be more aggressive, start looking for spots to steal the blinds. Um, and then as we go further and further on, that's really will, where skill takes advantage and, and takes over. And that's where we get into this push fold portion of the tournament where we play aggressive. Everybody else plays the same way that they are, um, especially near the bubble. Um, and maybe they even tighten up and you take advantage of that. So, I mean, that's kind of what my strategy is going to be. But I have not played sit and goes and a long time probably six plus months so um, I do have my trusty book right here let me slow this up here sit and go by Colin Moshman it is I guess you can call this this is one of the original sit and go strategy books that everybody um, anybody and everybody back in the days read when they got into sit and goes and it's still popular he just released a sit and go version uh, 2.0 or strategy 2.0 for the sit and go 2.0 games on Winning Poker Network. And look at this crap right here. Wow, kings versus ace queen versus fives. And he flops friggin' quads. That's friggin' awesome. Um, wow, okay. Nicely done, sir. <laughs> and, and this is what I'm talking about. We just build equity by not even playing. So that's pretty awesome. Um, we are going to raise gonna raise 3x because we are um, somewhat deep so we can raise 3x um, and I also have up over here I have push full charts for full ring games right here for um, for tournament play so this is gonna help me with my push fold portion of the game because like I said I'm not an expert with this and I don't have um, an ICM tool and and 
you know, I have the push full charts in here. I haven't really worked that much with ICM and, and you know, sit and go wizard and ICMizer and all that stuff. Um, but this stuff will do just fine in these tournaments. So I get three bet massively. I'm just going to fold. I mean, simple as that. It's pocket nines. I mean, the guy makes it some absurd amount. So we just fold our hand. Anyways, guys, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause the video. And I'm going to look for some interesting spots. And so when we get into some interesting spots, when we get into um, what I would call some interesting hands or I find some hands to play, I'm going to go ahead and resume. So um, I'll see you guys in a second. All right, so we're back. It hasn't been that long, um, but we are in blind versus blind situation. Um, this guy completed in the small blind. I checked in the big blind. We flopped top pair with a poor kicker. Some people might check back here, um, but we should definitely be betting here with top pair with a backdoor flush draw, even though our kicker sucks. So remember to stay aggressive. Remember to um, you know not give up and not play overly passive in situations where you shouldn't. So that was at hand. Um, we'll look for some more spots in a minute. So I'm going to pause the video again, and uh, we'll be back in a second. What's up, guys? So it hasn't been that long, but we are at the blind stages here of 2550. We pick up Ace King. I think, given um, stack sizes, we could probably only make it 100, but I'm going to make it 3x. I'm going to make it 150 just because I'm a little deep and, um, you know, I want to put more pressure on these opponents. And Ace King is definitely near the top end of our range. And if somebody wants to uh, raise it up, we're happy to stick it in as well. So, you know, we put a lot of pressure on them, especially the blinds, because neither of them are really getting out of control. Uh, the flop is not the best flop in the world. We have a 14 slash 0, playing pretty tight so far. He has 1,000 chips left. We do have um, a backdoor straight draw. We do have two overs. But I just don't know what we're going to get to fold, and um, it's interesting because he's time banking here. I think we do take a, a half um, pot size bet stab. Um, and even if he does have a jack, we have equity to catch up as well. So we have an ace and a king. And he folds, so that's a good result. It's kind of a dry board texture there, so it's really hard for him to have much. So if it was a wetter board texture, I'd probably prefer just checking back. But having two over cards, representing the jack in my range, uh, me playing fairly tight as well. I think it's fine. So this guy's been playing super aggro. I'm hoping he raises because I'll just shove it in his face with the pocket queens. If I get busted out of this tournament, so be it. Um, yeah, I think we're going to just 3-bet. And I think I'm just going to shove on him, to be honest. Just because he's been playing uber crazy. He 3-bet me until like 300 chips um, early in the tournament. So if he wants to gamble, he can gamble. I'm definitely going to be ahead of him. And he's queen, so we're like a 70% favorite. He has three outs to hit an ace. And uh, we hold and double up. Thank you, sir. So um, definitely this is not a standard move where I just shipped on him. This is purely super exploitive play. I just have been paying attention to him. Um, and, and I realized that he was playing really aggressively. He was raising really big. He was three betting really big. So he's a gambler. Pocket queens for me versus a player like that and a one dollar sit and go is the same thing as having aces or kings. So I'm just gonna ship it over the top and expect to get called by a super aggro person like this. Even have him listed as aggro fish pre. So um yeah, a couple good spots there. Got a couple winning hands. Um be back in a minute when we have another good hand up show. Well, it didn't take too long, but I end up getting pocket sevens on this table. I think Opening sevens under the gun um, is kind of marginal, but I'm deep stacked, and so I'm deep stacked. There's a couple other deep stacked players left to act, so I figured implied odds go up a little bit. This flop sucks, though, so we should be just checking and looking to give up. So it checks back. Again, we have good showdown value. Um, I don't see any reason to try to turn our sevens into a bluff. Uh, we have a 19 slash 0, and this is very interesting. What do we beat here? What's he betting 50 cents with? I, I think we have to call. I mean, we're getting absurd odds. He probably has a weak queen a lot. Um, he ends up making the wheel on the river, um, so be it. I mean, that was just a terrible play on his end in terms of value. But I don't know. I don't know in a tournament if I bet the 7s there earlier or not. 
Um, in a cash game, I'd probably bet on the turn, but in the tournament, I thought checking back might make a little sense. And the fact that he just kind of walked into that straight kind of happened. So it is what it is. Not a big deal. We still have um, just under 3,000 chips, so not a big deal at all. Uh, this guy opened chips, and he's open chipping for just over 10 BB, so pretty standard here. I think um, when he's open shipping like that, we have to think of a range that we can call with, and I guess I have to look at my, my push tables to see what we expect for him to ship with and then determine what we should call with. So this is definitely going to be fold, um, and we're close to the bubble on this table already, so it looks like there's going to be some decent action. So we're going to go ahead and fold. I mean, we're definitely not going to call with 4 or 5 suited, and um, yeah, so we'll see what happens. Big slick, definitely go in. Come on, somebody can go ahead and open jam. Um, here we're gonna raise. We're gonna raise to 300, and this guy is playing pretty tight. But I mean, he min raises. We have ace king. The money's going in regardless. And if this guy wants to ship it, then we can ship it in. So I want to size it so he can call, and we can get stacks in. Well, he's not snap calling. That's a um, that's a good sign. Queen King got him dominated, um, and we double up. So it's awesome. Back in it. Back in it. And I think his call makes sense. Um, he just ended up in a dominated situation, just a bad situation. I'm gonna check, um, and then if he checks again on the turn, I'm gonna bet the turn. So with the queen nine here, this is a spot, this guy has less than 10 BBs. If I want to open here, I should just be jamming all in and putting them to the test, I think. I'm not gonna open because I think this guy's pretty short. Um, and he might be a little tilted from me hit, me doubling up through him last hand. So I am gonna fold the queen nine here. Um, but I think in general, it's probably pretty standard spot. Round a two to one or three to one chip lead on everybody combined, and we have aces here. So happy days! Come on, somebody ship it in, ship it in, bud. Come on, player two. And I think we should be a bit of a dick, and we should sh just slow roll him just a little tiny bit. I think I should slow roll him. Um, nah, let's just call. Let's not slow roll anymore because I'm probably going to take a bad beat if I slow roll him all the way down to my timer. Hey, we're in the money. So two for two, folks. Two for two. Haven't played um, these tournaments in a long time. He's raising pretty big. He hasn't raised in a while. Should we call here? I think um, I think it's pretty close. I'm actually going to fold. And people are going to be like, Alton, what are you doing? That's a mistake. But I think I kind of have an idea of how this guy plays. He bets big when he has a hand. He ships when he just has any random ace or any card that he doesn't want to... Um, Go multi ways. A uh, queen jack, I think we just min raise. I mean, it's going to put this guy. I mean, if he ships, he folds. I'm going to call. So it's not that big of a deal. King deuce for their stack sizes. Should I stick it in? I don't think so. I think it's a bit too weak. I mean, especially when we have a four to one chip lead. 
things can get crazy. If I ship it in too light, they call, they have me dominated, they have a good hand. And then, um, you know, I can easily go from a four to one to having potentially even lost a chip lead. And so right there, I mean, I'm tempted to call, but there's, I don't know, there's really not a need to call just yet. Seven deuce. I mean, it just hurts me to give him chips, but I have to when he has such a small stack size left. A6, do we open raise? I mean, is it strong enough? I think we do. Um, it's close. A6 offsuit, we have A6 offsuit on both of them. For given the amount of blinds, and this guy actually min raised, so I'm gonna fold. Um, I think I'm gonna check back for pot control and for deception. And again, I'm going to check back again, try to induce him to bet on the river. Um, and he doesn't bet, so let's bet. Let's bet a little under a half pot size bet. And unfortunately, he folds. Man, this guy will not go anywhere. This guy is just like knitting it up and somehow staying alive, which is kind of crazy. He should have been gone a long time ago. Yeah, and we're completely done with this hand. Um, I mean, we're counterfeited. He's going to win regardless. He can have an ace. He can have a queen, a jack. I mean, I would bet with any decent eye card there on the river. Um, I think we just stick 9-10 off in versus him when he's so short there. I think he's probably going to call, but whatever. I think it's close enough. And he still folds. He still folds. Wow. No, this is simple. And he finally ships it in. So he finally has a decent hand. We're probably going to give him a little bit of money unless we get lucky and we get him out. So he's drawing to an ace or a queen. And we are now heads up. So we've now made a little more money. And this guy that just would not die, would not get out of the tournament, is finally gone. Um, I think we're going to check with a pair. And then on the turn, I think we bet. Uh, definitely not going to be opening 8-deuce off. Heads up, this will be interesting because I don't play heads up. So we'll see how bad I do. Uh, guys, don't critique me too bad. Like I said, I'm going to make mistakes. But you know what? We're in the money in both of the sit and goes. And um, yeah. Good times. Uh, four five off. Should we be opening four five off? I don't know. Um, given our stack sizes, I'd like something a little better. What is up with these hands? Four five three six. Come on. King four. I look like a complete nit because I am acting like a complete nit. Three minutes blinds are going to be going up to 200, 400. Ooh, we're going to double him up. Come on, give me a king or a 10. King or a 10. Yeah. Oh, well. And that's where this, um, these all-in situations where equity is pretty marginal. It's where it kind of um, starts becoming an issue. Where luck really is either on your side or it's not on your side. I think realistically, if this is a cash game, I probably should be opening close to 100% um, on the button. But in these tournaments, I don't think I should. It's 
guy's folding to half of the C beds. Backdoor straight draw, backdoor jack high flush draw. Might as well take a stab at it. Not hitting the flops. Double pair board again. And we have Jack. Let's try to get him to bet on the river. And we'll just call for value. I don't think he's going to call a raise, so we just call there. I just don't see the value in raising there unless he has a boat and he reships. Come on, bud. Just stick it in. And I think we'll time bank a little bit. And I think we have to call here. Ace two versus queen king. Are we going to win a race one time? Twice this guy beats. Wow, aces versus aces. Okay. Oh, yes. Yes. Wow. Okay, I've only seen that on the one drop. That's pretty fucking crazy. That was crazy. Aces versus aces. <laughs> and I won. Talk about a cooler, bud. Man, I'm sorry. That was pretty freaking brutal. If I don't win this tournament after that, then um, I don't know what to say. And this sucks. I mean, I'm super short stacked now. Um, I'm just going to be shipping in. What do I have? I don't have crap. I don't have crap for chips. 6 BB. Um, this guy's shipping in. This is a little too weak. Um, 6 BB, I think A6 off is probably within my jamming range, any ace. 9-5, we're going to have to give him some chips. Pocket fours, money's going in. Flop a pair, we bet, and he folds. Man, that was brutal. I wonder if he said anything after the ace versus ace. Doesn't look like it. Eight seven off. Do we jam for eight seven off? And well, he folded anyways. And I actually, don't think we jam eight seven off. And what's up with these cards? I mean, I get aces. I cooler him. Now everything is just going to crap. Nine ten off suit. Do we jam jack ten off suit? Do we jam nine ten off suit? Um, I don't know. I think it's close. Let's hope he doesn't call. We're going on 52 minutes. Hopefully everything will end in 8 minutes, but it remains to be seen. Definitely going to be jamming Queen-10 off. It's not a good sign when he's thinking about it. Is it me, or are we just completely card dead? Um, I can't fold every time I'm on the button, so I'm going to open up the king-8 offsuit because I am folding way too much. Come on, you can call now. I have tens. Chipping on up. Back to the chip lead. Slowly but surely. Big slick. Come on, bud. You can jam it all in. It's 
so it's nice my image is helping me out because I folded a lot on the button um, in this heads up match so it's it's really helped me out in that essence um, this is pretty close I I'm really think I'm, I'm either at a push fold mode and king four suited on the button um, it says all kings and so 11 big blinds I think we just stick that in um, any ace I think we just stick it in as well he's down to 10 big blinds oh and we need a deuce come on we need a deuce deuce on the river oh we are even now of course he has ace king <laughs> when he gets down to to 10 bb And actually, should be just jamming all in. Um, we have to fold there. So, didn't realize the stack depth. I mean, that's either a push fold. Three jack, definitely not in my push fold range. Well, actually, what am I talking about? No, we are at 2 4. What am I talking about? Um, we actually will be in 2 4 in two minutes. So, what am I, no, we're actually not a push fold yet. Snap call, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Boat over boat. Back to the chip lead. <laughs> Man, he is getting cooler left and right. Aces lose to aces, a boat loses to boat. I flop a set, he flops two pair. Ugh. King eight, we get in dominated against him again. Um, geez, this is really close. I actually think we fold when he opens. He ends up waking up with a hand every time I just open jam on him when he gets short. And it keeps the tournament going. Hmm. I'm going to time bank it to make it think like I actually have a hand. Deuce four, six, eight. Would be nice if we could um, flop a pair. We get him down, and then um, I double him back up. Just need to finish him off. All right, so it's close. I think we need a raise on the button. And he's just open shipping against me every time. I mean, there's really nothing you can do there. I think 10-9 off, I need to be open there on the button. All right, over here, we need to be jamming this hand. And over here, we're going to be uh, going all in pretty soon. I mean, he's he's gotten lucky the last couple of hands. He's starting to chip away at my chips, and there's nothing I can do. I mean, he's just getting cards now. And I just really can't call with the hands that I'm getting. Um, I think nine queen off on the button. Yeah, we need to jam all in. And if he has a good hand, good for him. So we are just coming up on... 
an hour. Let's see. All kings. Yep, all kings should be sticking it in. Versus ICM. That's what ICM says, so that's what I'm doing, folks. Well, that's, at least that's what Colin Moshman says. Do we just stick it in? Yeah, that makes sense. All right, so we now are up to 13 BB. I'm just going to full king three off on the button. Look for a better spot. Yeah, I could take a stab at this one, but I'm not. Let him take it down. He ends up picking up a pair of nines. He checks back anyways. Deuces and threes. Wow. Okay. Straight draw versus a set. Wrong person because I wanted this to get heads up. I think we have to call with the eights. And, uh, yeah, we're out. So we're out in third. Um, lose to kings versus eights. But I think it's a pretty standard spot there with 10 BB or even actually less than 10 BB. So we take third on this tournament. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's a good result. Unfortunately, we get cooler. But, man, this tournament took an hour and 26 minutes. Heads up here, we're on an hour and 16 minutes. So I'm ready for this to end. Profited 70 cents over there, over here. So far we profited at dollar sixty. So here we're gonna bet just because we have the backdoor nut flush draw and ace over, and he limped as usual. Six minutes, blinds are going to go up to 250-500 with a 50 cent ante. Hoping that this ends pretty soon because this is going to take, this is going to take a damn long time to render, folks. And I may actually just edit a bunch of crap out. Um... It's going to take a while to do that, but I think I'm going to edit it out. Maybe try to get it down to like 45 minutes. We'll see. Jack-5 suited. I'm not really sure if I should be opening this or just completing. Um, he's not folding. I'm just going to complete. See how he reacts to when I complete. That's the first time I've completed. So that's interesting. Um... Next time, I think I may try that with a weaker hand. And here we're picking up an open ender, so we'll take a stab on the flop. Uh, the turn is not the greatest turn card in the world. I don't think fold equity is that great. Completely bonk out, so I'm just done on the river. Jack 10. I think I'm just going to jam it in because we only have 12 BB. King seven, I think same thing. I'm just gonna stick it in. I'm kind of getting bored. <laughs> this is why I don't play tournaments because I get bored. Is it me or is this a really long heads up match, especially for a one dollar sit and go? You tell me. 
feels like this is a very long heads up match. Played 149 hands here, we're up to 186. Man, what is up with these hands? Come on, let's get kings versus queens. Let's get a couple big hands. Let's get this tournament over with. Well, we're going to be back to our good old situation of uh, jamming all in pretty soon. Uh, jack six off on the button. I don't know. I think it's a bit too weak. Kings versus king eight. And he's just sticking it in, and I mean, with the hands that I'm getting, 4-8, I just can't call. Ace-3, yep, money's going in. And I think we're just sticking in with another ace, and if he has a stronger ace, good for him. Back up to uh, 12 BB. <laughs> Cannot flop a pair in a limp pot, unfortunately. Ah, this is interesting. Queen 7. Do we jam? Blinds are going to go up anyways next hand, so just going to stick it in. Getting bored anyways. Queen Jack. I'm just going to call. I want this turn to be over with. He needs an ace. And we take a monster lead, and I'm just going to be going all in every single hand. Ace nine versus five seven. It's got a fate of five or seven on the river. And we take it down, folks. It only took an hour and seven minutes where I paused the video, actually an hour and 21 minutes. So we got first on one tournament and we got third on another one where we ran eights into pocket kings um, in a three-way um, situation. And um, we were chip lead here for a while and um, we couldn't win a flip versus this guy over here. But we played two tournaments we won two tournaments and um i don't play sit and goes it just shows how soft and easy these things are to help you build up your bankroll this is all i used to play like back in 2006 and really in these soft tournaments not much has changed so this video has been way too long i'm gonna go ahead and sign off thanks for watching if you guys liked it please click the thumbs up if you guys want to see more sit and goes let me know um, yeah, tell your friends, tell your families, tell everybody, let them know about my YouTube channel and subscribe if you hadn't. So take care guys. Appreciate it. I'll see you guys at the next video.